Now, third, fourth, and fifth of the, re of the realistic eightfold path are realistic speech, evolutionary action, and livelihood. And these are all the subcomponents of the higher or super education in ethics. Because what we say is unethical or unethical, what we do physically uh, is ethical or unethical, and what we, the way we produce our livelihood is either harmful to others or not harmful to others. So that, that, that ethical basis, uh, to, in order to create a calm, peaceful environment around you, where you're not harming others, you're not in conflict with others, you're living at a higher level within a community where people are sort of adopting each other as kin and seeing each other as, and expanding sort of their affiliation and sense of identification with other members of the community. They're doing so uh, on a broader basis. That's what the mendicant community is about. And for that, you need realistic speech, which is you don't lie to them. You don't speak divisively to get them angry with each other. You, speak, you don't speak meaninglessly to waste their time with frivolous, meaningless chatter. And, and you don't speak um, uh, harshly and use uh, speech as a bludgeon on, on people. So those are, those are the positive realistic speech, and the opposites are the negative. And then, um, and then a livelihood, right? So those are three. So the interesting thing here, in contrast to um, modern ethicist theories, is that realistic ethics in the relativistic world is motivated by a focus on the enlightened self-interest in being good, in that it is perceived as contributing toward a positive evolutionary effect for the individual being either self-restrained or altruistically motivated which develops them toward the higher self-realization of enlightenment, the full experience of reality, and the liberation from delusion. Um, to give an example, take the case of killing and saving lives, the first negative and first positive evolutionary ethical actions. Giving the Buddhist biological theory that the most hellish condition is to exist in total isolation and alienation from everything else, and the most heavenly is to exist in the most vast interconnection with everything else. That's what a Buddha is. The gods being immensely expanded in connection with worlds and beings beneath them, and Buddhas expanded to the infinite degree by experiencing themselves as interfused with everyone, not just you know connected, but totally inter interwoven. But anyway, identifying with, identifying with them all as oneself. Therefore, within that as a bio, as notion of the description of evolution, killing or taking away another's life is to separate yourself from them, ultimately in a sense, contracting your sense of self-identification as not being one with that being's life. So it is to head toward that hell where you're separating, you're increasing your sense of separation. Whereas saving another's life is to identify with it as being as important as your own life and being interconnected with you. So you identify with that being and you feel its, you, its life is somehow part of your life. And thereby you're heading toward the heaven and even beyond heaven to the enlightenment or Buddhahood of being totally interconnected with all other beings. If you go through all ten of the ethical and unethical paths of evolutionary action, by the way, very similar to the Hebraic Ten Commandments. They, they're a little different, but quite similar. They all result in similar contraction or expansion, hell or heaven, and enlightenment. So here we see an ancient philosophical and even scientific way of taking seriously ethical actions of body, speech, and mind so as to lead to evolutionary results.